Welcome to the Breakup Recovery Podcasts by your host, Barbara Stevens. Discover the wisdom and remarkable insights of Barbara Stevens, breakup recovery mentor, author, and public speaker. Barbara offers programs and solutions for any breakup so you can turn your life around, create lasting changes for the better, and embrace life again. Hello and welcome to my podcast, Breakup Recovery. This is episode number 004, Discover Carbness. I'm Barbara Stevens, and in this episode, I'll be talking about how to discover calmness, especially when you're experiencing some form of anxiety. Anxiety is close to my heart, as I have suffered from it twice now, and I'll go into more detail about this later on. I will also talk about the symptoms so that you can get a clear picture of what anxiety looks like. And then I'll give you some of the strategies that I have used and my clients have used. So hopefully you might find them helpful as well. Anxiety is a part of our daily lives and everyone can feel anxious from time to time. Anxiety is very common when you are going through the stressful time of a breakup. Everyone is different and so too are the ways in which you can experience anxiety. It can be confronting and challenging as you try and navigate past the symptoms on to finding answers, treatments, tools and exercises to bring back balance into your life. So that brings me to the next question. How do you know you have this condition? So, do you have a constant fear for the future and what that will look like for you? Is constant self-doubt becoming the norm? Do you find it difficult to see the light at the end of the tunnel as you feel the obstacles that you perceive in your way to achieving your goals become bigger than what they normally would be? Are you worrying so much that these thoughts are taking over your everyday life? Are your thoughts causing you to toss and turn when you're trying to go to sleep at night, preventing you from having a restful sleep? Are you waking up feeling tired and lethargic? Are you experiencing other physical symptoms such as constipation, diarrhea, irritable bowel, muscle cramps and nausea for no other medical reason? If the feelings that I have just mentioned are familiar and they are impacting on everything you want to do or preventing you from leading a normal life, then there is a problem and this problem needs to be addressed and worked through. I know for me, the first time I experienced anxiety came the day I decided to end my marriage of 20 odd years. I was having feelings of sadness. It could not shake the low mood I seemed to be constantly in. I could not see that things could get better for me. I was trapped in doom and gloom and felt I had no way of moving forward or up, so to speak. I definitely felt guilty for the collapse of the family unit. My children had no idea that things had gotten so bad that I could no longer live a married life with their father. It came as such a shock for them, and their reactions were both very different. One of them wanted to know all the details, which I only felt I could give her some, as I did not want to burden her with my problems, as she had to process the breakup for herself. And my other daughter retreated into her own world and did not want to know anything about the situation. But as you know, if you bottle things up, they come out eventually, and they did, in a big explosion. But rest assured that things have been worked out now, some ten years later. Well, it didn't quite take that long. The explosion came about 12 months after the breakup when she wrote me a letter and then confronted me. After a lot of talking, we both came to the understanding that the divorce happened and nothing we could do was going to change that. Back to anxiety. I have digressed, sorry. For some people, the symptoms come straight away like mine did. For others, they develop over time and can come on gradually. The main thing is to recognise the symptoms yourself or to listen to those that are close to you if they are concerned and see that you are not coping too well. They are the ones that can see you suffering and want to help you to get out of the cycle of anxiety. So listen to them and take on board what they have to say as usually they only have your best interest at heart. 
They say that just about everybody will suffer from some form of mental illness in their lives and it is nothing to be ashamed about. The more you talk about it, the more you will find that other people have experienced the same feelings and often they will share what works for them. They will give you some ideas on techniques that you might be able to try for yourself. I want to talk about the physical effect anxiety can have. These can affect you in different ways and can include difficulty sleeping, difficulty concentrating, rapid heartbeat and breathing, sweating, dizziness, headaches, feeling sick and diarrhea. If you are sitting there nodding your head and can relate to some of these symptoms that you have or have experienced, I am hoping that you have or have now recognised that you are suffering from either a slight form or a deeper form of anxiety. Have you experienced a panic attack? A panic attack is where you have an overwhelming fear that takes over your thoughts and almost paralyzes your body. Other symptoms you may be experiencing when having a panic attack are your heart races, your breathing becomes erratic, you begin to sweat or feel hot or cold, you are tingling or numb hands, you feel weak and or dizzy, you have a tightening of the chest and or stomach pains. So by now you might be asking yourself, what can I do about the anxiety I am experiencing? What are some techniques and strategies I could do to get myself out of the cycle of anxiety? There is a lot of information on the internet and I will go through some of the main ones that helped me and from what I understand after listening to some of my clients have been their choices also. Seeing your family doctor is one of the first points of call. They are used to seeing people with the same symptoms as you. They can discuss a plan that can get you through the tough times or refer you to someone who can help further. For me, the main technique I used was controlled breathing. But I also used another technique that brought me back into the present. When the overwhelming feeling came over me, I stopped. I recognised the feeling and then brought myself into the present. To do this, I said to myself, and sometimes out aloud, as saying it out aloud has a huge effect on stopping the cycle. So I would say what I was doing. So if I was sitting down watching TV, I would say to myself, I'm sitting down on this brown couch. I'm looking at the TV. There is a lady on the TV. I went on with this technique until the feeling of anxiety subsided. So I took my thoughts away from the feeling I was having and into what I was physically doing and into the now. I then started a breathing technique that is commonly used to reduce anxiety. I would take a deep breath and count slowly to three on the in-breath, breathing through my nose and then I would count to three on the outward breath through my mouth. I would continue this for about 10 in and out breaths. This technique also takes you from the feeling of anxiety to focus your thoughts on something else and that is counting and the breathing slowly in and out. Doing two things at once such as breathing slowly in and out and the counting to three takes up a lot of concentration and can distract you from the feelings of anxiety. I also use the word relax at the top of the breath. Just using the word relax helped me to do just that. Relax. My shoulders became less tense, the point between my eyebrows released slightly and I could actually feel my body relaxing. You don't know how tense you are until you say the word relax and feeling your body doing just that, relaxing. Another visualisation I used was to think that the in-breath was a beautiful, soothing blue colour, breathing into my body. The outward breath I visualised as being a red colour, discarding the toxins out of my body. Anxiety can disrupt your sleep patterns, either causing you to get too much sleep or not enough. 
it is important to get into a regular sleeping pattern and this can be achieved by setting a regular bedtime. Avoid heavy rich foods at dinner. Cutting down on your caffeine intake throughout the day, especially after lunch, and using blackout curtains, especially when the summer months bring more sunlight into your bedroom. A friend told me about this course online which I completed. It's a three-part self-help course and it is run by St Vincent's Hospital in Sydney. I found it very helpful. It was free and I could do it in the privacy of my own home and at a time that was convenient to me. It is self-paced and you just can't breeze through the modules at lightning speed. There is a time frame that allows you to read all the material and will only move onto the next page when the time allows you to do so. You take an initial test which gives you a guide as to the severity of your anxiety or depression and then you move on to completing the modules. They also give you extra information on their services and the clinics they run so you can make choices that best suit you. So you can either do the online course or you can attend one of their clinics. I'm sure there are other courses that you can access online. Another one of the courses someone told me about was Mood Gym. Before we finish on the subject of anxiety, I just wanted to mention setbacks, which is very important. They are common and normal to experience during your recovery process. They can be difficult to get over as you want to get back to feeling happy and healthy again, but persistence is the key. When one of these setbacks occur, try and look back at what state you were in when you first recognised your symptoms and started your recovery. Think about all the work you have done and the advancement you have accomplished. It may seem small, but at least you are on the upward side and moving forward. I have experienced a few panic attacks and I started a journal, as I couldn't see any progress I was making. After looking back over my journal a month later, I could see that I was slowly getting better and I had in fact made progress. I also started to speak to myself as if I was speaking to one of my daughters. For example of this was, after I had a dizzy attack, I would tell myself, for goodness sake, why have you had a dizzy attack? I thought we were over this by now, with all the work you are doing with your mind to get better, all of the reading you have done, you should be better by now. You shouldn't be experiencing any more dizzy attacks. I started to self-doubt myself. What was I doing wrong that made me had another dizzy attack? Was my approach incorrect? Should I do something else? I was very negative and self-destructive in my thoughts. I stopped and thought to myself, would I say any of these things if I was speaking to one of my daughters? If they had rung me to tell me they had had another dizzy attack, I wouldn't be saying things like that. I know I would have spoken to them in a more positive and encouraging tone. I would have said things like, you have made real progress, good for you. I can see that you are working at changing your thought patterns. You are doing a good job. You should be proud of yourself. This was a real wake-up call to me and made me stop and listen to my self-talk. So be kind to yourself after a setback. I have mentioned a few strategies you can try to improve your anxiety levels. There are many more available in the way of programs, exercises and tools you can try. Here are a few more that you might like to consider. Yoga, acupuncture, aromatherapy, homeopathy, vitamin supplements, muscle relaxation and massages, mantras and practicing mindfulness. So to recap on this episode, Discovering Calmness, I talked about what anxiety is, what the symptoms look like both physically and mentally. I talked about some of the different techniques you can use, such as bringing your thoughts back into the present by telling yourself what you are doing, like I'm sitting on a chair, the chair is brown, and I am looking at the floor, and it has big white tiles, that sort of thing and the controlled breathing, counting to three on the inward breath and using the word relax 
and then counting slowly to three on the outward breath. Implementing constructive changes to your daily life will cause your thoughts and feelings to change over time and this in turn will help you to have a more positive outlook about your future. When you start writing your progress down in a journal, you will be able to look back and see the progress you are making and you will start to feel that you are gaining control over your situation rather than be at the mercy of it. Identifying the problem, acknowledging the symptoms, preventing trigger situations, implementing techniques and making lifestyle changes are all part of the process to lowering anxiety so that you can feel happy, balanced and enjoying life to the fullest. If you find that none of these work for you, I would advise seeking out a professional and maybe medications such as antidepressants or antipsychotic drugs might be prescribed. I have an affirmation I would like to share with you that is relevant to the subject I have discussed. I am now ready to overcome my fears and release any anxiety I might be feeling. And the last thing I would like to say is, be gentle on yourself. You deserve happiness. If you would like to hear previous breakup recovery podcasts, visit barbastevens.com.au. Connect with Barbara Stevens on social media with Barbara Stevens Breakup Recovery Mentor on Facebook and at You'll Be Okay on Twitter. Read further blogs, view webinar replays, and download your free ebook, Three Easy Steps to Surviving Your Breakup, and much more at barbastevens.com.au.